Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you are checking out a first look video on ADSR. So in this video, we'll be looking at the newly released FabFilter Pro L2, the second version of the Pro Limiter by FabFilter. So I bought this with my own money, all the opinions, my ideas in this video, they're my own. This isn't paid promotion, just wanted to get that little caveat out there. So I'm excited to do this video because I love the FabFilter Pro L, and the Pro L2 really does improve the experience of the plugin. There's a lot of cool new features, and in that, in this video, we're going to walk through those features. We're going to look at them on a mix, as well as some grouped or bust instruments. So, on the screen right now, we can see FabFilter Pro L version 1 on the left, and version 2 is over on the right. Now, the key features, there's, there's new algorithms. There's four new algorithms in Pro L2. There's aggressive, modern, bust, and safe. There's also true peak limiting, a boatload of new oversampling rates, new metering options, as well as side chain input. So that's kind of the, uh, if you guys just don't want to watch the video, you want to get through it quickly, that's kind of the bullet point, right? The cliff notes of the new features in the Pro L2. So let's dive into them in a little bit more depth. So first things first, obviously the interface looks a little bit different, but very similar. It's not, you're not going to feel, you know, not at home using it. You're not going to have to yearn, learn anything new. Now, let's look at the different algorithms. So in version one, you had four, right? In version two, you have eight. The new ones are aggressive, modern, bus, and safe. Aggressive is great for EDM, hip hop, pop, right? It, I love how it sounds. It's, it's really in your face. Modern, a little bit, uh, it's an interesting kind of a mix. It, to me, it sounds like a mix between all around and dynamic on the first one. Not sure if that's true. Like I, I don't know what FabFilter used as reference points for their algorithms, but it's a great sound. Now, bus, which we're going to look at on bust instruments later in the video, colors the sound. It's not clean. It's not transparent. And I really like it. So we're going to look at that in a little bit. And then safe, this is for when you're not super worried about volume and gain and getting as much gain as you can out of the mix, but more in, you're more worried about distortion, right? So hence the safe mode. All right, so let's listen to this mix with it on. All right, so there's a quick look at how they sound on a mix with a good amount of limiting occurring, right? So let's talk about some of the other features. And real quick, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger on my screen as we do this. So let's now that we talked about the algos, let's talk about some of these features down here. True Peak limiting is really cool. So we're going to compare this with Pro L1 real quick. So I'm going to put it on to all around and look ahead and the attack and the release, let's make sure those are the same. All right, so this should be pretty similar, 3.6 decibels again, all around, all around. Now, let's check this out. So I'm gonna turn on FabFilter Pro L, the first one, and we're gonna pull up a multimeter. And in this multimeter, I have true peak limiting, or not limiting, I have true peak metering on. So true peak will actually look at where your song's peaking, even if it's going above unity, right? So if you don't ever look at true peak, you might actually be going above zero and not know it, but let's check it out on this drop. You can see here that we did peak above Unity, above zero. So let's turn off that filter Pro L1 and go back to the Pro L2. Now with this, I'm gonna turn on true peak limiting and I have this set to, uh, we got the output set to negative 0.1. And that's the same thing here we had down there, right? So let's see where this is where this is peaking now. With true peak enabled, when we look at our multimeter and logic, 
we shouldn't see it above. It will not go above what we have the true peak set or the the output. Sorry, the output here set to because we have true peak limiting on. <laughs> Right, you can see there that it's at point negative point one, and that's because the true peak is enabled. Now, when you're using true peak limiting, you might want to employ oversampling. So I talked about this briefly in the beginning of the video. There's now eight times sixteen and thirty-two times oversampling in the Pro L2 version. One just gave you two x and four x. If you don't know what this this means, uh, you're probably not a mastering engineer. Mastering engineers will see this and and get really excited, kind of in a weird way, probably, but uh, I don't blame them. It's cool stuff. So oversampling is a result of kind of like a cause and effect of limiting. When you're limiting, you can create aliasing and distortion because the limiter's reducing volume or it's you know stopping peaks from going above a certain limit, and that can create this unwanted sound. Oversampling allows for essentially higher rates of higher sample rate, right? Like it kind of adds sample rate to your host's sample rate. And it helps smooth out the, the aliasing and the otherwise kind of nasty distorted sound. So the more you, you know, the higher rate, the higher the CPU hit. That's kind of the cost. So I'm rocking eight times in this video with a min I have a little bit of lag when I change it to aggressive or modern, but it's not enough to really trip up my talking. Um, it, it A little bit of latency, right? But not a lot. But the uh, eight times is kind of in the middle, right? And this session actually has a, bu a bunch of synths, you know, mixing plugs. This isn't a stemmed out session by any means. So with that being said, the oversampling is pretty darn efficient in my mind. So if you're actually mastering audio and mastering for clients, that sort of stuff, 16 and 32 might, <laughs> might be a dream come true if you're a FabFilter Pro L user. All right, so what we're going to be looking at now is some of the other features here in the metering. So FabFilter Pro L didn't give you a lot of great metering options. That's why on my master bus, I always have, last thing I have, Logic Stock Metering. Well, I don't need to do that anymore. So if you go over here, you can, this is essentially your little section for how you're gonna be metering and what you're gonna be seeing on screen. This, this little button right here will toggle between the different play rates and views of the audio coming into the Pro L2. So the third one in is helpful for if you're trying to find like a peak or a transient in a dense mix and trying to figure out what it is. It's pretty slow. So that's the infinite mode, we have slow mode, we have the fast mode, and then we have the slow down mode. I actually like the fast mode and the slow mode weird because they're kind of polar opposites. But now over here to the right, you have this little, uh, it'll say negative 16 decibels by default, but this is your metering option, right? You have negative 32, which is why I believe I had the Falter Pro L set to. Then you have K12, K14, K20, and then loudness. And then over here we have the last one, we have loudness, which opens up a whole separate, you know, meter essentially. And you have LUFS, L-U-F-S, which is a great, uh, pretty industry standard way of measuring loudness of your track. And these controls here, you can set to different, different standards, essentially. You can set to CD, streaming, uh, these different, uh, you know, e I've seen this EBU R128, not incredibly familiar with what it is. You can also have, you can also set custom limits. So I'm gonna set this to streaming, right? Let's say I wanted to put this this track on like Spotify or SoundCloud or something like that. So it's really easy to see that I'm right in that kind of sweet spot, that LUFS range, according to how this meter is set up. But yeah, it's really nice having metering directly in your limiter because now I don't need this anymore. So last thing I want to talk about in the Pro L2 is you can side chain. So that'll be a little bit different depending on what DAW you're using, but I can click this, select any track to trigger essentially the limiter. 
which is really cool for those of you who are doing STEM mastering. That's where I see kind of the most uh, benefit. Also, I guess if you wanted to use the Falter Pro L2 to really slam the hell out of like a like a ghost kick or something, um, or I mean like a like an instrument, you know, side chain to a ghost kick, you could. All right, so let's let's uh, we'll keep it on the master, but we'll just leave it on the one of the old algos, and we'll turn the oversampling down to four times. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna listen to this on a bus. So here is my drum group for this drop section. All right, so let's load up the FabFilter Pro L2. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna choose bus, right? Makes sense. Let's listen in context. It's got a pretty cool sound. It does add some color to it, but I like the color. It's pretty easy to dial in. I was trying to gain mash just a little bit. So you know, we weren't like, oh, it's amazing because uh, it's just louder. So yeah, that's how it sounds on the drum bus. Let's pop it on to our drop synths as well in the group here. I'm gonna set it to bus. I really like what's doing on the drums. Not liking it a whole lot on these synths. The synths are pretty compressed as is, but um, let me try slamming the input. I just wanna see how colorful this gets. All right, guys, so that sums up our look at the FabFilter Pro L2. If you guys have any questions or comments, post them below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.